Natalie Nahai, welcome to the post-session interviews from Head in Madrid. You've just come off stage from, from your keynote uh, about the psychology of persuasion and, and what it is or strategies that make us click. Yeah. Um, in our industry, in the hotel industry, independent hoteliers kind of struggle with getting their brand.com right, mm -hmm. getting the right message to the audience and making it a seamless process and a very easy process for the booker to actually go through. Uh, and book a room with them. So based on your experience and understanding of, 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 of that type of market, how would you, or what would be your recommendations for uh, the smaller guy or smaller mm -hmm. hotelier to best represent themselves online and to make it easy for their guests to book or their future guests? Mm -hmm. So some of the smaller hotels, the boutique hotels, are the ones that I will naturally go for. And the ones that get it really right um, are often providing a very rich story to whatever is behind the hotel because they're independent, they're interesting, they've got values that I will share. So this sense of homophily, so love of the same, I look at the content or the videos they've created and I feel like it's a place that suits me. I think also minimizing visual clutter is really important and showing people where they are in the checkout process also reduces the sense of perceived risk. So um, those are just some things that, that these hoteliers can do mm -hmm. to make it better. Yeah, so when you say ch in the checkout process, just mm -hmm. to be sure, because we use the term <laughs> checkout when a guest leaves the hotel. Oh yeah. So what true. you're talking about is the actual process of the reservation. That's it. So showing them the steps of where they're actually at. Yeah. In your presentation, you also spoke about principles and, mm -hmm. and five principles. Could you just highlight perhaps for those that weren't in the session, what your key principles are, what you think some of them are really important, especially for the hotel industry. Sure. Um, so a bit of context, when we make decisions, often our decisions come more from an emotional place than a logical place. And so if we know that, then we can understand better how to create more engaging experiences. So one point around homophily, love of the same, expressing your values, making sure that there's a resonant message that's going to meet the people that you're trying to reach. Um, another element would be uh, reducing the cognitive load, which is the mental effort that, expends, that we're expending to get something done. Um, you can also increase processing fluency. So this is making any content that you're going to use much easier to understand. So using simple language, clear fonts, making sure that the font is visible if you have an auto-playing video in the background. Um, and then also you can use unpredictable rewards in, uh, in a relationship with a customer to create a sense of excitement and novelty. And that's known as... Um, yeah, creating a little dopamine spike just yeah. to give them a little gift. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you also spoke about um, shaping behaviour through social proof. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, can you elaborate further on that? That really kind of interested me. Sure. So one of the ways that we seek to make decision making easier for ourselves is to look at what other people are doing. So on a website, it could be having an image of loads of people taking a specific action. Uh, which you see often used in political campaigns, or it could be seeing how many people have booked a room, which you often find on booking sites, or say X number of people have booked this room, or X number of people are looking at booking this room. Um, it can also be through ratings and reviews. The more ratings and reviews you have, the more social proof that that's going to be a good purchase. Right, right. Okay, great. Um, two examples that you used uh, related back to our industry were Mr. and Mrs. Smith website oh, yeah. and the Hoxton website. Um, they get it right in terms of their booking engine and the process to get a person to, to make a reservation. Um, as I mentioned before, many hotels do struggle with this, especially around the, the content itself. Yeah. Showing the right content, the most visually appealing content. Mm. And a lot of hotels just think by putting a photo online or to show what the room looks like, that that's enough. In our industry, we're really, really focusing now at the moment about this experience or creating these mm. experiences, memorable experiences. So what other sorts of content could be really visually engaging mm. that hotels could apply to their, their, their booking engine or brand.com and, and how um, deep should that content be? Yeah. If so I think one of the things that, that we think about when we're going to take a holiday is the anticipation of what it's going to feel like to be in that place. So not just the room, but what about the culinary experiences we're going to have? Um, what about the streets? What about the nightlife? And I think when you look at boutique hotels or any kind of hotel that's wanting to serve an experience, all of this extra rich contextual stuff is going to be so important. So yes, of course the room makes a difference, but if you can have um, within that some images of where it is that the person's going to be, 
that are going to be creating excitement for the stories they're going to experience there, that's going to be a lot more persuasive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's about, as I mentioned before, this experience, creating an experience. So showing the potential book or what it is that, that they will experience while yeah. they're there with you. And it doesn't yeah. just have to be in visual forms. Like if you have on Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I like that they include little extras. So they'll highlight it in a different color that's high saturated. It's easy to, con to, to see the content against the background. And it might just say champagne upon arrival. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost that much to do that, but it creates a sense of being taken care of and of delight. And mm -hmm. that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned just before in another answer, this uh, dopamine triggering a, oh, yeah. a dopamine system and the head hedonic ad adoption, adaption. Hedonic adaptation. Adaptation, yes. thank you, thank you. So the first one was to update product frequently. Mm -hmm. Second one was change layout and structure. Mm -hmm. Third was alter user experience. Yeah. And the fourth one was make rewards possible. Yeah. But yeah. how would you suggest or recommend that they could apply that principle into their environment? Mm. And so to just, just to be clear about what hedonic adaptation is, it's that when we're exposed to a stimulus, our emotional response to that stimulus will um, attenuate, we become desensitized to it over time. So if you're constantly visiting a specific app to make your bookings or you're going to an engine or to a website, if it stays the same all the time, the novelty will wear off and so we might find it less engaging. So um, when you have to be, you, you have to be careful when applying this principle of change in not pissing people off mm. because suddenly the structure's changed and you can't find what you're looking for. So the best place I would suggest that one starts is to look at changing the content. So whether it's just the image gets moved around a bit or you use something which is more experiential in terms of the video content, the stories you're telling, that's a good way to start to gauge response. Um, and then you can change bits bit by bit, so as not to change everything so much that it alienates people from using mm -hmm. the site. And would you recommend a, 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 like a frequency in terms of how, how often? Uh, <laughs> well, that is the hard question. Not too often, but often enough that it keeps things fresh yeah. and no one will know the answer unless you do the testing. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's that one's a very tricky one to yeah, answer yeah, because yeah, it's always imagine. different. And, and just finally, what do you think would be a good source of, re, uh, of research or information that a hotelier who wants to understand this landscape better so that they can apply it to their yeah. brand.com or even their online presence, whether that's through their social media uh, as well. Uh, where would you direct them if they wanted to get more information and research? So um, a few of us have written books about the subject. Um, mine is called Webs of Influence, the Psychology of Online Persuasion. I'll recommend three others. So Susan Weinschenk has done some fantastic work on this. She's written several books. Nir Eyal has written a book called Hooked, which is also brilliant, which I highly recommend you check out, about habit-forming products and ethics. Uh, and the third person to check out is Roger Dooley, who's also written books about this. You can also check out content around UX, consumer experience, etc., and insights. Um, but I would suggest maybe starting with, with those books. Excellent. Great. <laughs> Natalie, you. lovely to meet you. you Thank too. you so much. Cheers. Okay.